So I have here Phil and Isabel's wedding book that they made off the photos that I took. I was their photographer at their wedding. And basically, I just for anyone that's specifically interested in shooting weddings, um, I thought it would be a great idea to kind of go through their book and kind of give you some tips and tricks and show you what I was thinking during specific shots, what tools I was using, and basically everything that goes into shooting this wedding. All right, so let's take a look. Um, I just to start off with, like I Phil reframed this in making this book, but this is one of my favorite shots that I took. You can see it's backlit green, probably 2.8 with my long lens. Love it. So again, we were talking about details in an earlier lesson, but here are some lesson shots. I shot this with a long lens near a window. You got to get those little details that they had a lot. We'll skip around a little bit. Nice dress detail, it looks like you got here. Um, I like putting the dress up against the window and blowing it out because it just adds that nice bright feel to it. You know, it's supposed to be a happy, bright day, so I thought that was cool. Then you can see I'm just shooting candid photos as people are getting ready. Um, you can see Phil's brother here brought uh, something to Isabel, and I captured that moment. So just kind of being aware of what's going on. And then you jump over to Phil's side, and he's there with his guys. Look, there's Sam. <laughs> there's Sam uh, over here in the bottom right corner helping Phil get ready, his cufflings. Um, it looks like this one we turned black and white. Um, this is like a really good example of moving your subject near a, white, a, a lighting source inside. And look how nice the, the light just kind of softly falls on him as he was putting his cufflings on. Um, I really love this shot. Actually, I've used this in my portfolio before. And I tried to mimic that with Isabel, which maybe you'll see right here. So you can see, again, nice soft light coming in. Um, she was talking to someone off camera. So it's good to just kind of snap in between poses. But yeah, also it's important. Her mother was there, her family was there, trying to get the bride and her mom, uh, the grooms and their parents um, is always good, especially while they're getting ready. And then getting the wedding party, having them step, as having the, uh, the bride or groom step aside and getting photos with her bouquet, his bouquet. Um, always looks really nice. These are mostly candid, just basic photos of the of the place. I, I have to admit, it was a little tough, and you can see in this shot, this is a really good example of a wedding uh, that has kind of gross, toppy fluorescent lights, uh, and also has some tinted windows where a lot of daylight was coming through, but it was also tinted by the blue. So now I'm mixed in this in this setting with daylight coming from from the from the door. I'm mixed with uh, different color, uh, different colored tint coming in, and then also just these weird warm lights coming from up top. So turning stuff black and white is always nice, but finding a good balance is always good. You can see I was trying to level out with the daylight here, and we had another shooter shooting from in front as people came down. Um, so a good mix is always good. Daylight here, just getting the ceremony. This is a nice wide shot. This is an example of having two cameras, being able to shoot two here and then also being able to run up and get that two shot, getting like a nice two shot from behind, always looking for angles that aren't necessarily typical um, is always super fun. Um, running around the front, shooting your subject, but also shooting guests. I mean, I guess this is Sam here, so I'm a little biased here, but shooting your guests and shooting the parents as they're getting married is always something to keep an eye out for. Um, this, again, I was complaining about these windows earlier, but look how great it looks in this shot. It adds a lot of color to the background. I think it makes Isabel pop. There's a nice little flare coming through. Um, I really love this shot because you can see how she's looking at Phil. Like, how wonderful is that? <laughs> That's true love right there, you can see it. So again, at the end of the ceremony, here's their first kiss. Really good example of shooting with a long lens really quickly, getting some negative space here. You can tell how excited Phil was. They're moving too fast for my shutter, uh, clearly, so you get some shutter roll. And then as soon as they do that, they start walking down the aisle and you can see I'm starting to shift from a long lens to a wide lens. They come out the window and we're here now with a wide lens and we're outside. This is absolutely one of my favorite shots of this wedding and I've used it for my portfolio shot. Um, Sam's cheesy smile always is in there, but <laughs> I got a wide lens and I ran over to it so that, or I flipped it up so we can use and get that shot right after seeing them come out. Getting more details, obviously. Um, we're gonna skip ahead. Here's, here's an example of everyone that was at Phil's wedding. Now it was a small wedding, um, so there wasn't a ton of people, but I got up high, uh, I think from a second floor window, and uh, had everyone position. I usually try to get some energy in there, and I shot everyone just kind of hanging out, and then I was like, all right, everyone put your hands up and celebrate, and so everyone did, and that actually turned out to be the better shot than uh, the shot where people were just kind of standing there smiling, so that's always something to do. 
Um, did lots of formal shots. It's great that Phil has these in here. I put them in shade for the most part. As time went on, the sun started to creep. Um, you can start to see it's, it's um, behind them. Um, positioning people so that the sun is hitting their back instead of their face is always better. So real quick, and noticing this, like shooting on a DSLR, this is a beautiful book. And uh, if you look in the back here, we used Peekaboo. Phil designed it out of all the photos. And uh, really, it's a wonderful, wonderful book. It's printed out nicely. The paper's nice. It's not too uh, glossy. And it's like an in-between between matte and glossy. And it looks really great. The colors are holding up. Also, Phil and Isabel did a thing where they had all their guests come and take a picture with them. They're standing in a small wedding, so they're able to do that. But how wonderful is this? This is a really great layout. Here we go. Here's the real, here's the real meat of this. Uh, again, this is a really great layout. Phil took this photo, and I tend to shoot a lot of couples with some negative space, um, but this is a really good layout and way to kind of show emphasis and create an emotion uh, with Phil and Isabel there. Um, again, you see I'm doing this constantly. Look at the sunlight on the back here, and look where it's coming from. I always try to put the sun behind them if I can. Here's more couple shoots. Um, this one turned out really great. The sun just looks really great on the background. I, this is like the perfect situation because I was able to shoot with shade in the background with a little bit of light gradient while still getting some light on the back of them to make them stand out from this darker background. Look for that if you can. It's a little tough to um, necessarily do. I really like doing this shot. This has become sort of a staple of things I do is I sort of cut off their faces and focus on their bodies next to each other because you get the bouquet. You get some of the jewelry and the ring that she may be wearing. You get the suit that he's rented and his custom tie. Um, it's really a cool kind of um, Americana sort of framing. And then I just have fun with them. Uh, have them play around, have them looking at each other, have them kiss. They're gonna be kissing so much that day. They're just gonna have to get used to it. Um, always having a kiss on the forehead is nice. This is the same photo that is on the cover of this book. It turned out great. You can see there's extra room over here, but the cover framed it like that. So over here, um, we were shooting in Manhattan Beach, California, and I hadn't even known this existed, and I grew up about 20 minutes away from there, and we found this sign that had uh, street signs to happily ever after, once upon a time, um, and they found it, and you, know, you just kind of go with it. They really wanted to go take a photo over there. We went over, we took a shot, um, and it really turned out great. They actually have this printed out in their house as well. Um, and then here's what I was talking about in a previous lesson. When you get to the reception early, I did all these little inserts of everything that was going on that they had set up. So here's the name of the restaurant. Here's things that Phil and Isabel made. They had signs on the back of their chairs, um, signs for the guests. They had a little screenplay that he had written out. Um, so really getting those details because honestly, those things are gonna end up getting lost or you know, sometimes taken or ruined. The cake, and the cupcakes obviously will be gone, <laughs> but getting shots of those is always really good. You can see they made a little IMP wood um, display in front. Um, getting inserts of that is really good for your book. Here they are arriving. Here they are at the actual reception. Um, they didn't necessarily have a giant reception hall, so it was kind of nice just to get little inserts and coverage of that. So you can see how the pictures are sort of winding down. Um, getting little inserts of glasses. Speeches is always fun to get. One of my favorite things to do is don't get lost in taking too many photos of the speech. Um, you can see here, I got Sam, I got Caleb, and I got his friend over here taking a speech. Um, but after the speech, there's always gonna be a hug. Like there just always will be a hug. So keeping that in mind, be ready for that hug at the end of the speech and the cheers. Um, it's a really good opportunity to get something really candid like that. And I, I really like that photo. Also during the speeches, looking for reactions. You can see here, we got some reactions here. Looking to Isabel, when her dad is giving a speech, looking to her mom, listening to the dad give the speech. Um, it's a really good opportunity to get those kind of reactions, but also in a layout that Phil did here, look how great this is. His, Isabel's dad's giving a speech, and you see the mom reacting, you see her reacting. It really creates a portrait story um, in the layout, and that's really what you're trying to do, is you're trying to capture the story of the day. This is one of my hardest, honestly, like the hardest thing for me to shoot is usually the cake because you never know which side they're gonna go on. You never know how many people are gonna get up there and start uh, taking photos or video. Um, so having a wide lens and kind of scoping out what is gonna go on in the cake situation is good to know. Also, um, I never know if the couple's gonna shove cake into each other's faces or not, so being prepared to switch to either lens uh, in a quick, fast way is good, because otherwise you'll miss it. Um, a good rule of thumb for me is I always just live on my mid-range zoom when the cake time comes because that's the only way you're going to be able to capture it fast enough. What a wonderful way to end a book.